you talked about well, you mentioned Dean Box a little bit there, and you know the, he is he is famous right now. You know the the whole world has seen first of all what his athlete did. Uh, you know, in, in taking down an Olympic legend um, and and winning a couple of gold medals herself, Ariane Titmus uh, in the 200 and 400 free, and then um, and then the way that Dean kind of performed, you know, in front <laughs> of the the camera. I don't think he knew there was a camera on him, but there was, and it, it ended up going worldwide. But what don't we know about Dean? What what are the things that you see? Obviously, he's put in years of work to get that result, um, and it seems like in some way he's being a little bit misunderstood. So as the head coach, what are you seeing in him that he's doing really well that really needs to be driven home publicly? Well, firstly, I think his behavior or what we call his, his, his exuberance and his celebration of his athletes' performances is well known. It's not a secret. He does it at local level. He, he When his kids achieve something, um, he celebrates. Obviously, that was... Uh, 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 probably beyond he, he admits he lost it a bit um because it was it was ep it was it was an epic uh success and it was planned and it was executed to the to the t um so from a from a perspective of him locally at a local state queensland state championships he runs up and down the pool he swings his arm he's always doing things like that it's that's his personality on deck coaching what what you need to know is this guy is an exceptional detailed um, driven coach that I love going to his program and watching him coach. So my role, I'm fortunate. I basically am employed during the not during when campaigns not on. I travel to every of all the performance coaches programs, so I rotate around. So I'd probably be at his session every third week on a Monday afternoon and be there on deck. He 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 gives me a stopwatch. Well, I have my own, but he he always tells me I don't know how to use it. But anyway, he's says, I need you to time that lane. And he gives me something to do. And I get to watch him at work with his whole squad. And he is he is across everybody so that in detail. His session presentation, he writes it up. He talks to his group. He gives them the detail. And then during the training session, he might be working with the middle distance group. But the sprinters are over here and, you know, form strokers. Or he's got them split up into groups. He's got Maxie, who's his assistant coach, who works with him. Um, but he, he, he specifically keeps talking to all the athletes during the main training sets, and he's got connection with every single one of them, passion with every single one of them, as equal as it is to Ariane. And uh, he's a very well-planned, very well-detailed, um, very knowledgeable uh, person. Um, uh, you know, if you, want, if you don't want to get into a, a guessing game with him about movies or songs or anything like that, he loves – Loves playing music and getting you to guess the band and the song and <laughs> play with him. He's he's very 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 clever. But I, what I would say is, in coaching terms, the guy is one of the hardest working coaches I know. Um, he's out of the Michael Ball school, as in Mick Palfrey is. They both worked under Bowley. Um, he also worked under Stefan with Vidmar. So he's had world class coaches uh, that have that have mentored him and still do. And the one thing, Dean, is, is very humble. He will come to you and he will ask your advice on things. He is not a know-all. He's very much, he wants to know what I think. He wants my feedback on technique. Uh, he'll ask me to work with some of his breaststrokers, for instance, and ask me about the technique. Or he, he's very humble and he very much wants to learn. Um, and he, uh, he's... Uh, yeah, I, I can't. I can't speak highly enough of, of his coaching, and um, and yeah, you know, like his celebrations were 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 an example of how we all felt, to be perfectly honest. But we just we just don't express ourselves that way. Yeah, mate. Listen, I did a live show at the same time that the four hundred was going on. I was I was commentating in America, and I wasn't that far off what Dean did. And I'm not coaching her, so like, um, I was pretty expressive myself, but. Uh, yeah, you got a winner there, mate, and you got to keep him. He he's awesome. So yeah, we got to look after him, and I think that's the big T is is me mm -hmm. talking to him about his balance and mm -hmm. and just finding that balance because mm -hmm. you know you can only go um, 100 miles an hour for so long. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to, as you know, as a coach, you've got to find um, you got to find a way to um, 
to balance yourself. And, and I think that's his next step for him as a coach. He's achieved a, 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 an exceptional result. Like he's climbed Mount Everest, as he said, I think on, I think he said to an Australian journo, they said, what's next for Arnie? And he said, well, she can't represent Earth and race against Mars. So she's pretty much achieved the, the highest standard possible. And I thought that was a pretty good statement because, you know, she can only repeat is the only thing she can do now. And uh, mm -hmm. that's the biggest challenge for any any athlete. Talk to me about Dean Boxall. I mean, like you said, Dean worked with you for a number of years and now he's kind of come out of his shell the last couple of years and, and doing you know, some amazing things. There's a lot of talk ab about him and and um, his talent. Um, what What is he doing well? What What makes this this young coach um, so dynamic and 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 such incredible results in in at this Olympics, especially? I know Dean very very well. Like um, I coached him for two or three years there when I was at the Valley Pool. And then he coached alongside me for six years at St. Peter's. He was head of the age group program there, so I know him extremely well. Um, and, you know, we've known each other for many, many years before that. But uh, I think his number one asset is just his his absolute competitiveness. He he hates losing anything. Like, he'll uh, make a competition out of everything. When we were coaching at St. Peter's, we used to drag these huge covers off the pool during winter. And Dean used to pick four or five or six of the age group kids and he'd have six kids on one barrel pulling in the pulling in the covers and he'd have another six and he'd be timing them to see who was the quickest. <laughs> so what would be a mundane task, Dean had turned into excitement by having a competition just to see who could pull the covers off the quickest. He's just, he's one of those guys that can uh, just instill that enthusiasm in every situation that he's in. You know, he's a master motivator. He just knows how to push buttons of the people that he's got in his program. I've never seen anything like him. He's he's just a whirlwind. He's um, got great knowledge of swimming, got great knowledge of people. Um, he's just, you know, knows how to put a program together. Um, he's got sprinters. He's got middle distance kids. He's got distance kids. He's got, just covers the whole gamut, butterfly, backstroke, breaststroke, freestyle. He's one of the few people that can, um, you know, coach a large squad. I was in Peters for 14 years and, you know, six of those, I uh, was with a guy called Mick Palfrey and Mick and Dean are very similar, uh, almost mm. a, uh, almost a similar style of coach. Can coach big numbers like Dean could do a great job coaching two athletes, but he could do just as good a job coaching 22 athletes or 32 athletes. He's just got that ability to go around to every, every single session and just show him and, you know, drive and commitment. He's just very, very passionate about what he does. And, you know, Mick Palfrey, the other guy in there, he's on this team. When I first started coaching at St. Peter's, we used to have trouble with the, with the heaters in at the pool. The heaters would freeze up. And Mick Palfrey was on the boarding. Uh, he, he, he was a boarding master at St. Peter's. And um, he was coming to the Beijing Olympics. And Mick got the key to the heating room, opened it up, got a hose out, and sat there for an hour and a half to two hours every single morning at about 1 o'clock in the morning to hose all the ice off the heaters so the heaters had worked properly so the kids would have warm water the next day. Wow. So, you know, this is the <laughs> this is the type of people that uh, you know, have, have, have sort of come in come into that program and come out of that program and it's it's a no surprise to me why both Mick and Dean are having the great success that they are. Yeah. Yeah, mate. Look, uh, a lot of people were kind of introduced to Dean after his uh, you know, um, reaction to to Ariane winning the the 400 freestyle at the Olympics a lot. I mean, the world was introduced to Dean Boxall at that point, but we've known him for a long time and his passion. And um, you know, it, it's nice to see a coach having that type of emotion. Most most coaches keep their emotions in, and but but for him to let it out like that, it really meant something, didn't it? You know, I think, you know, he, he's had a mission for the last three or four years. Like, you know, when you look at when Arnie came into the program, she was swimming okay, but I think she was swimming around 412 and maybe even 204, 203 for a 200. So mm. she was swimming at a reasonably solid level for a 15-year-old girl, but nothing nothing outstanding. And, uh, you know, Dean had this goal. He had this vision of where he saw Arnie going. And um, probably not a lot of people believed that he could do what he did. but. Uh, you know, he, he's just proved everyone wrong. And, uh, 
you know, she just seems to be getting better and better every time she swims. You know, she had a great breakthrough at the Commonwealth Games back in 2018, uh, but she's just gone on to bigger and better things 2019, 2020, and she's she's now a double gold silver medalist um, at these Olympics. So, uh, you know, he's, mm. he's just done a great job. Obviously, you've got to have the talent within your program, but, um, mm. you know, you've got to have the vision, you've got to have the drive as a coach to try and extract the best out of the kids that you've got in there.